Thank you for this opportunity to present at this conference, and thank you, Deborah Peel, for putting together such an outstanding conference. Regrettably, I couldn't be there in person. A key question that comes up in the case of IMS Health versus Sorrell in the broader discourse of public policy is does the HIPAA statistician provision sufficiently de-identify patient data? The HIPAA statistician provision is so broad that it simultaneously supports good and bad practices indistinguishably, allowing data that can be trivially re-identified to enjoy the same wide distribution free of HIPAA privacy protection as data that has provable guarantees of anonymity. IMS Health, like many other entities, receive patient data under the HIPAA statistical provision. And the question is, is the data they receive sufficiently de-identified? Can patients be re-identified? As background, HIPAA provides two provisions for sharing data beyond the care of the patient so that the data are free from HIPAA penalties and oversight. These are the HIPAA Safe Harbor provision and the HIPAA Statistician provision. The HIPAA Safe Harbor provision prescribes which fields are not allowed and dictates that dates can only be years and zip codes have to be restricted to the first digits. The Statistician provision requires the data holder get someone who declares he has the skill to attest that there is a minimal risk of re-identification. There is no certification or educational requirements for the person. There is no definition of how small minimal must be. The person does not have to reveal his methods nor the results on which he bases his decision. So in earlier work, I have recommended that, and many have adopted an approach termed as a conservation of privacy. The idea of the private cert approach is to compare the identifiability of a proposed data release to the identifiability of a version of the data that adheres to the SIPA safe harbor. By identifiability, we mean given a record to how many people could that record refer. If it refers to only one person, we say it's uniquely identified. Under the private cert approach, the data are sufficiently de-identified under the statistician provision if it puts no more people at risk than did the data under the safe harbor provision. The Health Information Technology for Economic and Clinical Health, the HITECH Act, is enacted as part of the stimulus bill in 2009, and it asks HHS to reevaluate the privacy provisions of HIPAA and make any necessary changes. This poses as the backdrop of the Sorrell case. HHS has already reportedly confirmed my earlier findings, that is that the HIPAA safe harbor can be effective at limiting re-identification using demographics. In 2002, I reported on the uniqueness of demographics in the United States population. For example, 87% of the people in 1990 were uniquely identified by date of birth, gender, and zip. But as we begin to generalize those demographics, the identifiability drops. And we see that the HIPAA safe harbor tends to be around 0.04%. And that gives us a signal that even under the safe harbor, people can still be re-identified. This case is a good test for the HIPAA statistician provision because there exists many other ways that IMS could achieve its stated purpose that offer stronger guarantees of privacy. But there have been no incentives for IMS or other vendors to use stronger, more privacy protective methods. With the variability in the possible answers, the question is, is the patient data sufficiently de-identified? Can patient B re-identified? Because simply using the statistician method alone allows such broad variability. There's no incentive to use the least identifiable version that could be possible. By re-identification, we mean a subject's name is correctly associated with a de-identified record. The question that, that many people have started in the discourse with respect to this case already have sort of fallen on two sides of the re-identification question. Paul Ohm and his side argues that re-identifications are always possible and can be easily done in today's data-rich network society. Jane Yakowitz and her supporters on the other side argue that any claim of re-identification is overstated and that in fact we don't know that there is a basis for the, these re-identifications. Both sides have referred to my work and distorted it in ways that were self-serving to their purposes, and some grossly so. 
But we do acknowledge that there has been a lack of enforcement and a lack of transparency that have confounded public findings. The Washington Post reported that the federal government received nearly 20,000 allegations of privacy violations under HIPAA, but imposed no fines and prosecuted only two criminal cases by 2006. More cases have followed since. And we have to go all the way back to 1996 to get a documented sense of some of the harms. A survey of Fortune 500 companies reported that a third of the 84 respondents said that they used medical records about employees to make hiring, firing, and promotional decisions. Allusions have even been made to a banker crossing medical information with debtor information at his bank. We don't know if it's true, but true or not, these, po these things are possible. The question is, what actually is the re-identification risk? To scientifically answer this question in the context of the Sorrell case, we've introduced two re-identification experiments. The first experiment has already started and the work is underway. We expect answers very shortly. Negotiations are underway regarding the second experiment. And we've asked IMS Health to join us in a third experiment. These three experiments will give us the scientific knowledge we need to add facts to these discussions and discourse. Thank you very much.